Hello, we are Kent and Leonda George serving in Palawan, Philippines. And I hope that the song that um, our mountain team just sang to you, uh, ministered to you. Um, and I hope that during these trying times that you have found that Christ truly is your hiding place. I want to read um, just now from Romans 8, verse 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I, I, I like that verse because God has this incredible <laughs> ability to bring good out of bad. The devil is sort of the other ways. He can take everything good and turn it into something bad, but God always brings something good. And it reminds me of a story. Last year, I was in the United States. We were getting stuff together to put in a container to be shipped to the Philippines. And I had to drive from Virginia all the way up to Wisconsin to pick up a trailer that was being donated. And of course, I didn't have time to do it, but I figured, okay, we can fit it in here. So just before the 4th of July, I got in the truck, headed up, and I'm going through Ohio and all of a sudden, it's evening, it's just before dark, and I pull into a gas station, I open the door, and there's horrible noises coming out of the truck, just terrible. And uh, I fill up, and, and I, I pull over and park, and I think, I can't go on, this, there's something radically wrong with this vehicle, and I'm not gonna get out on the road because something's gonna break. And so here I am with nowhere to go in Ohio. I don't know anybody in Ohio. I, I, I'm there saying, okay, God, what do I do now? And legitimately, all I could do was pray. And I'm saying, okay, God, how are you going to get me out of this predicament here? I, I'm trying to be, I'm supposed to be in Wisconsin tomorrow. And here I am in Ohio. Well, I pray and I think, okay, maybe just maybe there's some donors for AFM in Ohio and there's somebody that could recommend a good mechanic that is not going to rip me off. So uh, uh, I think, okay, so I call up Lawrence Byrne and you know the amazing thing is Lawrence calls me the next morning. Well that night I had nowhere to stay. There was a motel there for $90 a night and it didn't even look like bed bugs would want to stay there. So. I just climbed in the back of the truck and slept there for the night. I'm from the Philippines, that's normal. And uh, next morning, uh, I get this call and it says, hey, he says, you know what, Mark Coleman's folks live out there. Why don't you talk to Mark Coleman? So I call up Mark, he calls me. And he said, oh, I tell him the problem. He said, hey, no problem. My folks are around there. Everything's, everything's going to work out OK. And, uh, you know, come to find out, his nephew works at an auto zone. He knows a guy, his specialty is Fords, and he's gonna put a good word in for me. And it was amazing. The place that I needed to be pulled was just four miles from where I broke down. And, uh, and I got there, and then I find out that I, I didn't even have to pay for the towing. I, towing. I had to pay $11 or something like that. Well, so I'm sitting there with a truck in the shop. The guy says, well, it's 4th of July coming on. Everything is going to be shut down. You're going to be stuck here for the whole weekend. And I'm thinking, man, I'm stuck here. What am I going to do? So I, I reach in my pocket for my cell phone. And guess what? My cell phone's gone. Now, if you want to be in a predicament in the United States, be without, be without a cell phone and without a vehicle. And that's a bad situation. Well, come to find out... <clears throat> My cell phone had fallen out in the tow truck, and the tow truck driver said, okay, no problem, I'll take it back to the office at the end of the day, which was 30 miles away from where I am. And uh, I'm sitting there, okay, Lord, what am I supposed to do? How am I gonna work this all out? You gotta, you gotta figure this out, I, I don't know what to do. So uh, anyway, uh, 
you know, I, I got this. And I thought, well, okay, I'll rent a car. So I called up. He said, oh, yeah, no problem. We can rent you a car to drive 30 miles. That's only $250. And I, I thought, no, no, that's not going to work. We're on a budget here. I said, God, you got to work this out. And then all of a sudden, he puts this idea in my head. He says, hey, go to Home Depot. So I, 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 one of Mark's relatives picks me up. I said, hey, can you drop me off at Home Depot? He said, well, yeah, I live right close by there. So we all go to Home Depot. I walk in there, I look in the wall. For $19.99, I can rent a flatbed pickup for 45 minutes. <laughs> so I rent their pickup. I drove out, pick up my cell phone, get back, you know, with a flatbed pickup. And now I have a cell phone. Then I call Mark. I say, he says, he says, hey, where do you have to stay tonight? I say, well, I don't know. I, I'm still figuring that out. He says, well, you can stay at my, my folks' place, but they're, they're really old. And I say, hey, Mark, no problem. I'm really old, too, so it's no big deal, you know? And anyway, that evening, Mark was getting off work. He drives over from Michigan and picks me up that evening because they were planning to visit their folks. And I went on over there, and man, what an incredible blessing. You know, here I'm rush, 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 and all of a sudden, hey, I'm ready, and I'm able to take some time off. I'm with one of the most incredible families I've ever visited. His folks are just wonderful. Uh, I mean, it was just a fantastic opportunity, and they're living in Oberlin. And uh, I found out, oh, yeah, Oberlin College, and they gave me this whole thing. It's the end. It was a, I had a historic tour of the place. It was the end of the Underground Railway and all this kind of stuff. But I'm still thinking, okay, God, I got to get that trailer. What am I, I, if I sit here the whole time, what am I supposed to do? And, uh, you know, it's going to be Monday or Tuesday before that truck is fixed because they find out the, the flex plate is broken on it. It's a holiday. They have to order the parts. It's going to take time. So anyway, that Sabbath, uh, Lawrence had told me about an Amish Seventh-day Adventist church close by. I said, okay, God, I'm going to visit this Amish Seventh-day Adventist church. That's going to be really cool. I've never had an opportunity. And, uh, and so I go there, and uh, I walk in, and it's really cool because, you know, here, talk about a different culture. Man, it was a really different culture. And I, I sit through their Amish Seventh-day Adventist church and everything. It was, it was really good. And then I stay for the potluck afterwards. Well, as I'm sitting there at the potluck, this guy sitting across from me, he says, hey, what are you doing? I tell him a little bit of what's going on. He says, well, you want to borrow a truck? And somebody says, oh, man, you want to lend him that old junker? And I said, hey, I don't care if it's a junker or not. If it can make it to Wisconsin and back, that's all I need. He said, hey, yeah, no problem. Uh, just show up at my place tomorrow morning, Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. That'll be fine. You can borrow it. And I think, oh, okay. And I thought, isn't this strange? The one place, here I need a truck. How many people would think you need to go to an Amish church to borrow a truck? <laughs> I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. So the next morning at 6 o'clock, I go over to his place, and I come in, and he said, hey, I'm going to be gone, but I'll leave the truck sitting there with the keys in it. And I thought, okay, that's great. And so I'm there, and I pull up. It's a practically brand new Ford pickup. I mean, it's got all of this electronic stuff. It took me about 15 minutes to figure out how to start it and everything. But I mean, it's, man, everything I needed. And I drove all the way up to Wisconsin. I arrived there. This fantastic trailer that this, that uh, the husband of one of our former missionaries, uh, Kiana, her husband has built this trailer. It's incredible. And, I picked that thing up, stayed there the night. I mean, it was just a wonderful experience visiting them all, seeing everybody there. And the next day I drive on back. I arrive there that evening and uh, so late I can't take the truck back. The next morning I'm there with his truck back and, uh, and I call up the shop. And I say, okay, well, so what's with the, uh, with the uh, truck? He said, I just finished it. I got the parts, the flex plates in, and and I went on over there, and he charged a really cheap price. I mean, you know, this normally would be a huge amount, and I, I thought, man, everything just worked out perfectly. You know, there in Ohio, when I first broke down, I'm saying, oh, man, what's going on? And it's like God said, hey, you need a vacation. You need to take a couple days off. I got some really neat people for you to meet. It was just 
a fantastic experience. So I jump in my truck and I get the trailer on the next morning. I head for home. I get about 30 minutes out of town. The brakes lock up on the truck. But you know, I just say, okay, Lord, what now? And I check it out. Hey, there's an otter zone uh, three miles away. So I sort of limp on down that way, replace the caliper on the truck. I'm on my way and drive on back all the way home. So, you know, that experience for me was one where it says, hey, don't worry about it. When things go wrong, God has, it gives him an opportunity to do so incredible things for us that we normally wouldn't have done ourselves. And uh, I look back on that and I just say, wow, it was so neat to meet Mark's parents. I told him, I said, now I understand why Mark is such a nice guy. I know the family he grew up in. It was so good to be there in Oberlin College to visit that place where, where uh, you know, the Underground Railway was, to, to look at all that historic stuff. It was so neat to go to an Amish Adventist church where they loaned me this practically bare, brand new Ford pickup. And when it was all said and done, I just say, wow, it worked out so much better than if everything had gone perfectly. Because if I'm going to break a flex plate, that was the place to do it. I mean, it just worked out incredibly well. So I, I like that verse. It says, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, God is able to make something good come out of it. You know, at first you say, oh man, this is terrible. I know when I was lying there in the back of my truck trying to sleep, I was saying, man, what's going on here? But I just said, God, you're in control. Let's see what you have planned out. And he did it. It works. And it's just neat. Every time things happen like that, that God is there. Every time God has a plan and you're following that plan, he has these surprises that are so incredible. And you just say, thank you, God. You can work it out. And uh, I'd just like to encourage you, you know, don't worry about the trials and tribulations. The fact is that if you're having no trials and you're having no tribulations and everything's going smoothly, then something's wrong because the devil isn't giving you any trouble. He only gives trouble to people who are actively working for God and making a difference in this world. You know, if you're sleeping, he's not going to bother you because he likes you sleeping. So. It's just really cool to have a God who can work all things out, make everything turn out for good. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. You are so awesome. You have chosen to adopt us into your family. Here, the king of the universe wants to be our father. We, we can't really comprehend how awesome that is, but Lord, we thank you. And we thank you that no matter what situation we find ourselves in, you have an answer. That all we have to do is we just have to have faith. We have to, we have to be aware that you will work things out. Everything is in your hands. Everything is under control. We thank you for your love and your goodness. And Lord, most of all, we pray that the work that you began in every single one of us, that you will complete it because that is your promise. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete that work. And so I pray for all that you will be faithful to complete that work in everybody. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Somewhere on this earth, in the heart of a foreign land, a family with a passion is living their mission plan, bringing God's truth to a hungry, thirsty tribe, knowing where their lives are always on the line. Missionaries need missionaries too. Need the prayers of loved ones, they need love from me and you. And when they just like Christ make the ultimate sacrifice, someday in heaven they'll thank you. Cause you're a missionary.
day in heaven they'll thank you for the things your prayers have brought them through. And your mission is accomplished. Oh, thank you. You're a missionary too. You're a missionary too. Sonary too